Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guy and this is the second episode of our Raycaster in C++ series using the SFML library for graphics and in this video we are going to continue by starting to implement our actual Raycasting functionality in this video. So if I open up my terminal here and I'm going to switch to the directory where we created the project in the last video so if you have not uh, watched that then go ahead and do it because you probably should and if I go ahead and uh, uh, press ls here uh, like to get a listing you can see that in the last video we created this main.cpp file but we have also got a make file here now uh, I created the make file in this video because uh, of course we are going to have a lot of files well not really a lot of files but still a uh, some amount of files and you would not like to you know uh, uh, have to go into like uh, individually compile each file or each command that would get tedious and uh, we would want a fast build system for that we have created a simple make file because that is pretty much all we need so yeah I did not show that in the video I'm going to give you a brief overview of the make file so let me just open it up and uh, you can see that this is the make file so we first begin by setting our uh, compiler to G++ then we set our flags to MMD and MP uh, the flags uh, these flags means that uh, MMD basically means that it will generate the actual dependencies like the dependency file dot D file for the make file so that uh, we can uh, find out which when a header is modified we can find out when we need to recompile the source or not and this MP will also is uh, make file option uh, and uh, we set the L flags which basically allow uh, we in this flag we just link all of that SFML libraries and we set our binary name to just raycaster and we set our build directory to the just build dot slash build and for the sources we just use wildcard here and get every cpp file in this like directory so every cpp file we create is automatically going to get into these sources and for the object we just take those cpp files and change the extension to dot o and put that in build directory and for dependencies we just set the dependencies to basically like similarly we go over like uh, in each object file and actually uh, this need to be objects and uh, we just uh, change its uh, extension from dot o to like dot d and uh, uh, in here you've got a bunch of commands here the first is all which basically depends on this run command so it will run this run command which uh, depends on whether the uh, actual binary is built or not so build directory slash binary and if it is built it will just execute that file and if it, uh, and the actual command for building that will um, it will depends on whether all of the object files are compiled or not and if they are we will use our compiler because the compiler can also function as a linker and uh, this uh, dollar sign and this symbol means here is the actual like uh, all of these object files here and then we use o here to like for defining the output file which is going to be we use this dollar and add symbol to get the actual you know this argument the build directly slash binary and then we pass in our uh, our linker flag variable and here we use this uh, make file command call include and we pass it our dependencies and this will make sure that whenever an include file is changed uh, is changed then it automatically modifies only the correct source file so yeah that's pretty awesome and now for like inside of uh, you know build directory uh, so for like compiling each uh, individual object file uh, we, it of course depends on whether the CPP file has changed or not if it has changed we just uh, make dir and we pass it our it pass this p flag which means that it won't give an error if the build directory already exists if it does not exist then it will create it then we will call the compiler with the compiler flags and uh, we'll pass this c flag which means that it will only compile not link or anything and this c symbol here means that uh, it will give it this the cpp file and then we'll go ahead and uh, pass o here and the, the add sign means that it will give it this argument which is the actual name of the object file uh, yeah here so uh, the last command we have here is clean which will just remove the build directory and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for our make file so this is pretty simple and you should be able to find it in the github repository now with the make file out of the way we are going to go ahead and just uh, close this or actually let's not close this actually let's close this for once and now you can see we have got only two files right now and I'm going to hit make of course you need to make sure that you have actually got make installed by sudo apt install make and and I've got it already so I won't do it just run make now and it's going to do everything and then automatically run our app and now if I say ls you should be able to see that there is a build directory here as well and if I do uh, the ls of that you can see we've got main.d along with main.o and raycaster here so yeah that's pretty awesome and if I just run make clean 
and then I run this you can see it's now removed everything so yeah now that's pretty awesome and I'm going to open it up uh, in Vim again just nothing or, or particular I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this into full screen mode and now we'll get started with implementing our actual application so for that the first thing we'll do is that uh, I'm going to go ahead and press control and to open up npm tree here you can see we have two files here now we are going to add a new file uh, you can add it in npm tree by just pressing a and I'm going to uh, call this one map.h all right we are going to open that up and in here the first thing we are going to add is an include guard so hashtag if not def we are going to add that uh, if uh, you know we are going to just say underscore map underscore edge then we are going to define this uh, actually that was wrong uh, it uh, kind of messed up okay so if uh, we are going to do this here this is just an include guard to prevent our file from being included multiple times and in here we are going to create a class called map all right so this is going to be a class here and uh, you can see it's called map and it's pretty simple and uh, what it this class will do is it will essentially keep a grid of like uh, the actual map and it will handle the functionality for drawing the map and everything else so uh, before we actually implement any of this I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, actually let's do this here and open up main.cpp and in here we are going to include uh, our map.h here map.h and we are going to uh, go here and create a map called map all right so that's uh, that's the map out of the way and now I'm going to go under map.h again and in here in the public we are going to create two methods uh, actually yeah uh, we are going to create two methods the first one is going to be uh, called uh, let us call it uh, draw so we are going to call this draw and it will take as argument an sf colon colon render window render window uh, actually a reference to an sf render window and uh, we are going to call this window so yeah this will uh, what this will do is it will take a window and draw the whole map to that window and uh, actually we do not need to take a render window we can take our render target as well here render target uh, like that because uh, uh, using a render window is not really necessary since we should be able to essentially draw onto a render texture as well if we need it and we might need that later if we decide to make a minimap or something so it will be better to use a render target here and uh, as you can see we are doing here draw scene and not actually doing anything here in here we'll just go ahead and do map dot draw and pass it our window like that uh, window uh, so yeah that's pretty awesome now for the actual implementation of map let's just go under map.h first of all and uh, I'm going to go under private here and I'm going to include an std uh, I'm going to use an std vector uh, of std vector so it will basically be a two-dimensional vector uh, and thus uh, it will basically be like a two-dimensional vector of ints and we'll call it our actual like grid here so this will represent the grid and of course it's going to be well two dimensional since uh, we are basically like uh, got uh, you know one is the x axis and one is the y axis and uh, we'll represent both with vectors and this will be like actual the private grid that we will be using for representing our map and uh, this ray casting technique that we are learning will operate on like 2d uh, grid based uh, map and now i'm going to go under like this nvm tree and i'm going to create a map.cpp here as well and we are going to open that of course first of all we will include map.h and in here we are going to just create an implementation of that we will create like a void uh, map colon colon draw uh, yeah like that and it will take an sf colon colon render target a reference to that called target and by the way uh, make sure that uh, um, save this and make sure that in here like you have also got uh, uh, it, I renamed this to target because window was not an appropriate name since uh, this render target could be anything except a window as well. Now inside of map.cpp in here we are going to create an sf colon colon rectangle shape uh, which we are going to just call a rectangle and of course it currently does not recognize that we will need to include the header uh, let's go here uh, hit hashtag include uh, sfml slash graphics uh, slash uh, rectangle uh, shape.hpp 
and this is our rectangle here and we now need to this rectangle will actually uh, be representing our like background and the reason we have a background it would be like we are create this will allow us to easily create a grid and how we are gonna do that you will understand in a second but just remember that this is a background that needs to spawn the whole like uh, size of our actual mm, you know the whole grid it needs to span the whole grid so in order to do that the first thing i'll do is go under like uh, map.h and in here we will like uh, you can see we've got like a draw function here uh, that's all nice and in here we've got our grid we're going to create a float here called cell size which will represent the actual size of an individual cell now in here we in the when we are doing the background we'll initialize with an sf colon colon vector to f which is like the actual like vector and uh, what this will do is that uh, you can see that like uh, this will represent the actual size of the background so for the x size we are going to just say uh, you know we can say for example our grid dot size and now we need to actually decide on the way our grid will be so if we uh, like let me just say this and you can see that uh, in here we have got like a grid which is like a vector of vectors of integers now uh, we need to decide whether the first subscript that we use is uh, like giving us columns or rows so whether we put it as y x or we put it as x y now if we put it as uh, uh, y x like uh, that would allow us to you know uh, in an easier way it for uh, to access the actual like uh, you know uh, represented in a text based format so it will give us rows in not columns and if we do it columns it will allow us to use x y but it won't give us a very text readable format so we'll assume that we are doing a text readable format and uh, the first like uh, that you know this main vector here like this vector uh, so uh, like this vector this vector here is uh, you know not uh, the uh, this vector is a vector of rows not a vector of columns and this will is the actual y coordinate and uh, then this vector here it is the vector of uh, uh, like uh, actual cell so this is the x coordinate so first we pass the y then we pass the x so uh, with that out of the way let's go under here and we will take our grid dot size and we will multiply this the actual size of the grid uh, and also we'll need to cast this to a float probably and we'll uh, take this and multiply this by our cell size now as i said before this is for y so we'll need to get grid uh, zero dot size and that will give us our uh, you know size the, the first because uh, all of our grid has going to have like uh, same dimensions like each row is going to have the same dimension so we can just access grid zero dot size here and we'll multiply that with our cell size and uh, after doing that for the other one we'll just say float and we'll say grid dot size and we'll multiply this as well by our cell size and we'll save that and uh, uh, yeah that is pretty much it that's going to give us this is giving us the x and this is giving us the y and yeah well that is pretty awesome it might cause a bit of a problem if our grid is absolutely empty so if our uh, grid is empty grid dot empty uh, it will give us a bool so if our grid is empty we'll just return immediately and not do anything and uh, yeah that should that should allow us to like get a background shape done here now let's just go ahead and say target dot draw and let's draw first of all our background since uh, the thing we draw up first is going to be like drawn at the bottom of everything so we obviously need to draw our background first Okay, so after we have drawn our background, the next thing we need to do is draw the individual like uh, cells. So for that, we can create a rectangle, another rectangle shape, SF colon colon rectangle shape, and we will just call it. Uh, uh, let's call it cell and what this will do is it will have a vector to a size of course but the size will basically be cell size on both like this will represent the actual cell size now that is pretty cool but we will actually take that cell size and uh, we'll multiply that by 0 0.95 uh, the reason we are doing that is this will make the actual cell that we draw a bit smaller compared to like uh, you know the size actual cell size it will be a bit smaller than that and this will make it so that our background that we have got here uh, will kind of re uh, allow us to have an automatic grid here as well so let's go ahead and say uh, for example we are going to set the background color set fill color to sf colon colon color uh, colon colon uh, 
uh, column column white here and uh, this uh, will give us like white color here and what that would ensure is that uh, our white color that we have it will uh, make the kind of white grid lines when we actually draw all of the cells because even if a cell is empty we won't leave it empty actually we'll draw like a black cell on that place so it would allow us to have like an automatic grid without having to actually draw the grid separately so yeah that's a clever little uh, trick i think so yeah now we have got our cell and now we need to begin by actually drawing our each of our cells one by one but that is what we will do in the next video because i don't want this video to get too long so for now we'll just wrap this video up here and we'll before we wrap it up actually uh, we'll do a little bit of a test here by implementing a constructor for map so we'll implement a constructor for map which will take a for lot called cell size and uh, uh, let's just uh, create another int called width and another int called height and based on these values that we provide it will automatically initialize our vectors and everything so uh, we can implement it in like the cpp file we'll go here and we'll say map uh, map column column map uh, yeah that and actually map column Man, no, we accidentally did the destructor and uh, this is uh, as I said take a cell size and a uh, integer width and another integer height so we will uh, need to basically construct a map based on that and it will currently be like an empty map and uh, uh, we can kind of initialize it really easily by using the initializer syntax and we can say for example we can initialize our cell size uh, to be cell size like that and we can initialize the, all of the other values here as well so the other thing we need to initialize is our grid and uh, uh, you can see that it has got a bunch of different constructors here now uh, the one we are going to use is this one that will take a size uh, n and a value uh, which will be able to you know use to kind of create an empty grid here so we'll use grid and for the actual number of variables uh, as i said before the first one is representing the actual rows so this will represent the number of rows so we will say height here and for the value we will of course pass another std vector here so we will say std colon colon vector and uh, uh, we will pass in here uh, let's just uh, for example pass here width and let's pass zero for the actual int argument and yeah that it will initialize our vector quite nicely i think and now let's go here and you can see it says no matching constructor uh, we are going to call the constructor style size we will say something like uh, uh, let's say 32 and for the uh, width and height let's say 50 by 50 now let's save that and i'm going to open up terminal here and i'm going to run make and uh, if i run this you can see that it does give us a well white screen here which is uh, very white not as much as i would have liked so i'm going to go here and first of all let's just increase this a bit i'm going to increase it to 1200 by 675 still maintaining the same aspect ratio but it will be a bit larger because that was too small for a screen so let's uh, go here and uh, open up the terminal again so uh, actually uh, let's open up the terminal and in here i'm going to run make again and you can see that it still is filling up it completely and the reason it's uh, doing that is because uh, uh, well quite kind of simple that we have got basically too large of a map here so 32 multiplied by 50 is uh, giving uh, something of like 1600 almost so let's go ahead and change this to 20 by 20 to kind of see a bit uh, it a bit better so now let's go ahead and run that make and you can see that yeah that's uh, the new size that we have got and of course you know, we can increase the width of this as well so if i uh, were to click this and for example let's set the width to be uh for example let's set the width to 30 while we set everything else to you know 20 the height to 20 and we'll run make now and you can see that it has now increased the actual span of this area so what that means is that our background drawing is working and the actual drawing of the grid we'll cover in the next video so stay tuned for that because you don't want to miss that one and make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and bye